Welcome, my dear viewers, thank you for being with my channel and watching my videos, I'm telling you a story from my life, watch this video to the end, you will understand what I'm telling you, so as not to miss my new videos, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your explanations in the comments then let's go. Hey everyone, I'm Claire, and I want to share a chapter of my life that revolves around challenging relationships with my in-laws and husband. Currently navigating the complexities of a divorce, I thought it might resonate with those of you who've experienced unwarranted criticism from your in-laws. Let me take you back to how it all began. I met Zane, my now estranged husband, on a dating site when I was a 19-year-old college student. Zane, at 25, had a stable job. Despite the age gap, love blossomed between us. I've never been one to judge based on age or appearance, so Zane's age was never a concern for me. However, Zane struggled with our age difference. He often questioned, Why are you with me, Claire? I don't understand. I'm so much older than you. You could find someone your own age who's better suited for you. Yes, I could, but I don't want to. I fell in love with you, and age doesn't matter to me. Zane, burdened by insecurities, persisted. There must be other reasons, Claire. It's not natural for someone like you to love someone like me. I wish you'd tell me the truth. I am telling you the truth. I don't want to date boys my age. I love you, and that's all that matters to me. Despite my assurances, Zane struggled to believe me, revealing deep-seated self-esteem issues that may have contributed to his single status. Determined to prove the authenticity of my feelings, I embarked on a journey to demonstrate the depth of my love for him. Throughout our entire relationship, I refrained from letting Zane spend money on me. While I wasn't a broke college student, I wasn't rolling in wealth either. Despite my financial constraints, I made sure to buy him gifts and cover my own expenses each time. I held a modest job, so I wasn't destitute. Zane seemed to appreciate these gestures. Regrettably, Zane's low self-esteem persisted, and he continued to doubt the authenticity of my love. Despite my best efforts to be supportive and understanding, his mistrust shattered my heart. It wasn't until the first two years had passed that I discovered the root of Zane's self-esteem issues. Meeting his parents, Michael and Molly, shed light on his struggles. Michael, Zane's father, had experienced a stroke of luck, winning the lottery and dramatically improving their lives. They purchased an extravagant house and secured their future with the remaining funds. However, Michael and Molly carried an air of superiority. During our initial encounter, Michael boasted, not everyone can make it big like me. I was a hard-working man, and look where it got me. Do you know how uncommon it is to win a huge lottery? The chances are very low, but I did it on the first try. They took pride in their decision-making skills, insinuating that Zane, despite completing college, would never match their financial success. Molly hinted that Zane's previous partners were gold diggers, leaving as soon as their financial situation improved. The couple openly questioned Zane's ability to make sound choices. This attitude infuriated me. Zane's parents indirectly accused every girl he dated of being interested only in his money. Over time, Zane internalized these beliefs, contributing to his insecurities. The insinuation that I, too, was a gold digger became a humiliating part of the narrative. Fed up with the unjust assumptions, I decided to defend both Zane and myself. I declared, I'm sorry, but I have to disagree with you. Zane has worked hard to establish himself in his career, and with time, he will achieve even greater success. Michael rebutted, Well, that doesn't change the fact that women only want him for money. The money we have is ours, but Zane does co-own the house. Ultimately, it will be his when we pass. Let me tell you, every time they see our $200,000 house, I swear these girls see dollar signs in their eyes. I can't vouch for Zane's past relationships, but I'm certainly not in this for the money. I love your son, and that's the reason we're together. I have no interest in your house. Don't worry, Claire. Sometimes it's challenging to accept that people can be successful and live in nice houses. 
You live in a small rented apartment with roommates. After spending time around our house, you might start desiring it too. It's just a matter of time. Michael and Molly's comments were pushing my anger to the brink. I was on the verge of exploding. Zane heard it all but chose not to respond or defend himself, steering the conversation in a different direction. His nonchalant attitude surprised me. On our way home, I decided to address it with him. Zane, your parents are being unkind. They're insulting both of us. Why didn't you speak up? What did you expect me to say, Claire? I can't be certain they're entirely wrong. Women in the past have used me to try and benefit from my parents' wealth. They made grand plans involving the house and how it would be ours once my parents passed away. Even if they were gold diggers, that doesn't mean I am one too. You stayed silent when your family insulted me as well. You know my family is well off now. There's a chance they're right about everything. I'm not saying you had bad intentions, but I can understand why it might seem questionable. You don't have parents, so you rely on my inheritance alone. What you're suggesting is absurd, Zane. I've never pressured you to spend money on me. And just because I don't have an inheritance doesn't give you the right to label me a gold digger. Zane remained unwilling to acknowledge my concerns, insisting that he loved me and the reasons behind it didn't matter. He shrugged off the need for further discussion. While some might have found solace in such assurances, I couldn't accept the thought of him harboring negative beliefs about me. I attempted numerous conversations, hoping to make him understand my perspective. I even suggested therapy, recognizing its potential benefits for him. However, he adamantly claimed there was nothing wrong, causing me to eventually abandon the effort. As time passed, I distanced myself from his family. We became engaged shortly after my college graduation, and although my job paid decently, I started saving to contribute to our wedding expenses. We split the costs evenly and got married when I was 22. However, the subsequent three years turned into a tumultuous period of my life. Zane frequently visited his parents, returning home in a sour mood each time. I knew Michael and Molly were still taunting him and branding me as a gold digger. Despite my pleas for Zane to limit contact with them, he continued to engage with his parents. Their words poisoned his perception of our relationship, convincing him that no one could genuinely love him. Even after years of love and care, Zane remained suspicious of me. The burden of constantly proving myself became increasingly draining. However, the breaking point arrived on Zane's birthday. In line with his preference for small celebrations, we had a quiet cake party at home. I presented him with the expensive watch he had desired. Zane was elated with the gift, but my joy waned when he suggested visiting his parents to showcase it. Despite my reluctance, I accompanied him at his insistence. Upon reaching their house, Zane eagerly displayed the watch to Molly and Michael. Mom, Dad, look at this beautiful watch Claire gave me. I've been wanting it for a while now. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, did she know Zane? It seems she does love you after all. We were quite concerned for a while there. Don't get carried away, Michael. She's a gold digger. She married our son because we own a $200,000 house. Let's not forget the facts. Yeah, you're right. I almost forgot that the house is the only reason Claire married Zane. Excuse me? Why do you think I married your son for your house? Well, you were just living in an apartment after working for four years. Besides, Zane is so much older than you. Why would you marry him unless you want something from him? I'm sure our house was always an attraction, if not his money. I married your son because I love him. All your theories about my gold-digging intentions are wrong. Zane knows the truth, and he will tell you that, won't you, Zane? To my complete surprise, Zane remained silent. I was already feeling uncomfortable with my in-law's belief that I was a gold digger, but Zane's reaction, or lack thereof, shocked me. He kept his head down and avoided eye contact with me. Feeling perplexed, I decided to push him a bit. I couldn't fathom why he wasn't standing up for me. 
Why are you not saying anything? Your parents always thought I was a gold digger. How will they know the real me if you don't tell them? Why are you quiet? Tell them they're wrong. Um, I don't know what you want me to say, Claire. I don't know if my parents are off the mark. There might be a possibility that you're after this house. Are you serious right now, Zane? You believe I married you for your assets? He's not wrong to think like that. It's suspicious that you've never considered buying a house. You haven't even discussed it with him. For someone renting a place, owning a house should have been a priority. Yeah, it should be a priority, but you've chosen not to work toward owning a house. Our place is expensive, and you can't afford something like this even if you tried. So you decided to marry Zane and settle here. That makes more sense to me. I mean, why would you marry me, Claire? You might have feelings for me, but I think there's more to it than just love. I found myself speechless after this exchange. All the love I had for Zane seemed to have been reduced to nothing. At the end of the day, my in-laws and even my husband viewed me as a gold digger. While my in-laws' reaction bothered me, it was Zane's response that devastated me. In that moment, I made a decision. I wanted a divorce. I didn't immediately disclose my decision to them. I waited for the right time. So when Zane and I returned to our place, I contacted a lawyer and initiated the divorce process. The lawyer assured me that the papers would be ready within a week. In the meantime, I opted to stay in a separate room. Zane assumed I was just letting off steam and had no idea of what was coming. When the divorce papers finally arrived at my parents' house, I packed my bags and left. When Zane called me in a panic, I instructed him to come to an address and bring my in-laws along. Despite his confusion, he agreed. Upon their arrival, I was waiting on the porch. They looked taken aback by the house. I said, you must be wondering why I brought you here. It's a beautiful house, isn't it? No one can compare their house to this. It costs around $2 million in today's market. Pretty expensive, but worth the money. There's also furniture with an added value of millions. What is this place, Claire? I don't know why you have access to such a house. Why don't you guys come in so that we can talk? I can't tell you everything on my porch. What do you mean by your porch? I brushed off their astonishment and walked inside. They trailed behind, even more impressed by the opulence within. The owners of the house had spared no expense. As we settled down, I took a deep breath and addressed them. I've reached a decision, and that's why you're here. I filed for divorce. Here are the papers. We can proceed with an uncontested divorce if you agree. What? I don't understand. Why are you filing for divorce? Zane's voice held a mixture of confusion and concern. Because you and your parents believe I'm a gold digger. You think I'm after your house, right? Despite my assurances, you refuse to listen. So, I'll spare you from my gold-digging self and divorce Zane. It seems that's what everyone wants. You're considering divorce just because my parents told the truth. That's ridiculous. We didn't say anything untrue. Why the dramatics? Zane's tone betrayed his disbelief. I think this is for the best, Zane. If she's adamant, you should sign the papers. At least then you'll find someone who truly loves you. His mother interjected, her expression unreadable. Why did you bring us to this house? Do you expect me to buy this for you as part of our divorce settlement? Zane's voice carried a tinge of accusation. Why would I need you to buy this house, Zane? This house is already mine, I replied calmly. The shock and disbelief etched on their faces hit me like a bomb. They regarded me with disbelief as if I were joking. Zane and his family seemed utterly unconvinced. How on earth can you afford a house like this? Your renting and your job isn't enough to cover this. Stop lying to us? Zane's father demanded, his tone sharp with suspicion. I'm not lying, Zane. Remember when I mentioned that my parents left me some inheritance? Well, this is the house I was talking about. It's under a trust now but I'll officially inherit it when I turn 30. I don't work a high-paying job because I have a trust fund waiting for me. 
That's impossible. Your parents passed away a long time ago. They should have let you have the house earlier. Well, you see, my parents were aware of the potential leeches I might attract. So they instructed me never to disclose the house or trust fund to anyone. Call it foresight. But they knew someone could exploit me. Hence, they placed everything in a trust to keep it safe until I reached 30. By then, I'd hopefully be settled with someone who genuinely cared about me, not my inheritance. Oh my God, Claire. You should have told us about your wealth. We had no idea. This is a sizable house you have. We could all live very comfortably here. Yeah, you should have shared that sooner. We thought you were after our house. We could have avoided all the misunderstandings. I would always knew Claire was perfect for Zane. I've been saying she's a great woman. Look how wealthy she is. Zane really found a great match. Hearing this, I couldn't help but laugh. Their attitude toward me had shifted so rapidly that it made my head spin. What was even more bizarre was that they soon seemed to forget about the divorce filing. I took out the divorce papers and signed them. As I was saying, here's my signature for an uncontested divorce. You can just sign these to make it easy if you want to fight. We can take this to court. I won't live with you anymore. Claire, listen to me. There's no need to rush this. You've already proven you're not a gold digger. There's no reason to get a divorce anymore. We'll even apologize for any misunderstanding. That should make things better, right? Yes, yes, Michael is right. We are sorry, Claire. We doubted you for no reason. I don't want your insincere apologies, Zane. For two years, you allowed your family to berate me and label me a gold digger. I expected you to at least defend me. But no, you sided with them and accused me of being a gold digger as well. I won't stay with someone who doesn't respect his wife. I'm done with you. We can part ways amicably or involve the courts. The choice is yours. Zane, Molly, and Michael tried their best to change my decision, pleading with me to let go of the past. In their minds, what happened was just a simple misunderstanding. Not once did they show remorse for tarnishing my name. Their audacity fueled my anger. When I reached my breaking point, I demanded they leave before I called the police. My anger intimidated them, and they left. Over the next few weeks, Zane and my in-laws continued to harass me daily. They begged, pleaded, and even offered bribes to convince me to stay. Their belief that I could be swayed with money only intensified my fury. It revealed that they still considered me motivated by financial gain. The irony was that, as Zane co-owned the house with his parents, I was entitled to half of his share. This realization fueled their desperation for reconciliation. Despite their attempts, I remained steadfast in my decision to part ways. I relocated all my belongings to my parents' house, asserting my right to stay there even before officially taking ownership. Zane and the in-laws persisted in reaching out, prompting me to change my number entirely. I wanted to avoid their constant attempts to contact me from unfamiliar numbers. Zane attempted to discuss matters at my workplace, but security was informed and asked him to leave. Zane still hadn't signed the divorce papers, holding out hope for a change in my decision. Nearly a year has passed since I initiated the divorce proceedings. With only a year or less remaining before the legal process concludes, I've managed quite well on my own. Living independently, I've found happiness and financial stability. While I've gone on dates, I'm not considering anything serious at the moment. According to a cousin of Zane's, they are apprehensive about paying me my entitled share of the house. Legal fees are piling up, and their savings are insufficient. Zane is even pushing for a sale, harboring resentment toward his parents for the upheaval in his life. At this point, I simply don't care and only want to be free from that toxic family.